Okay, hopefully everybody can hear me. I'm hoping someone will put a message in the chat box if they can't. Um, all right, so today's webinar, thank you for joining everybody. I imagine that it's probably a lot of your lunch breaks at the moment, uh, but thank you for coming along to this session today. Uh, I am really excited to present to you this topic today of networking. Uh, it's played a massive role in my personal life and career so far. And so I, yeah, I'm really excited about today. So I'll just start by doing the acknowledgement of country. So I begin today by acknowledging the trust, uh, traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today and pay my respects to their elders past and present. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today. Okay, so there are some other webinars that we have in this series. So we have a personal branding uh, webinar as well. We have a resume and LinkedIn webinar, and we also have interview skills webinar. So to access these resources, we've just put a QR code up on the screen. So grab your phones out and scan this QR code and you will have access to the other webinars in the series. All right, you will have access to this after if you didn't quite uh, get a chance to scan that QR code. All right, so the learning objectives uh, for today are as follows. So by the end of this session, you will understand the power of your network, understand how to be a good conversationalist, have identified networking events to attend, be ready to network online, and also have a better idea of your story. So let's dive into it today. First of all, a little introduction of myself. So my name is Adrian. I work here at Intern Match as an account executive. So what that means is I am kind of in the background building the relationships with companies that become a part of the program and open positions for uh, digital jobs participants to, uh, to get into, which is exciting. Um, I love what I do. And the reason I do what I do is because I love building relationships and helping people. If I can make a little bit of a difference in someone's life, that to me is, uh, is everything. Uh, something I am currently learning on a more personal level is about internal family systems therapy. I think it's very fascinating. Um, and so a lot of my spare time has been going into that recently. A career goal that I have is that I want to be able to run my own health and well-being workshops. It's definitely a passion of mine as well to be able to help people in as many ways as possible. I love traveling. Uh, I love going overseas. I love traveling around Australia. Uh, I just love being in nature, really. So any adventure um, that is on the cards, I'm very excited about. I'm currently reading a book called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway by Susan Jeffers. I've read this book a couple of times and I absolutely love it. It's, yeah, as the title says, it's all about just uh, acting in spite of our fears. And there's a visualization piece as well that I think is really powerful. Um, and last but not least, my family. So I am recently married, got married two months ago. Uh, so my husband, Mitchell, and my rag doll cat, Dora. Uh, Dora made the cut, not Mitch. I'm sure he'll be okay with that. <laughs> uh, but let's move on. So that's a little bit about myself. Now, networking is something that uh, I guess can be looked at in a, in a heap of different ways, right? And I think if you were to ask me what networking was, um, you know, a handful of years ago, I would have been a bit scared about it and thought that it was, you know, talking to really successful people and, and trying to, um, you know, create a conversation with someone that was just like way above my level. Uh, but if you are asking yourself what, you know, networking actually is, networking is the action or process of interacting with others to exchange information and develop professional or social contacts. And so to put more simply, networking is just having conversations and it's also having a network um, and sorry, also having a network is just nurturing and maintaining relationships. When I first started networking, I, I was very scared. Uh, I remember the first few networking events I went to, I actually rocked up and turned around and walked the other way um, and went home because I was just so nervous to go and talk to new people. It was not something that I uh, was very comfortable doing and I never actually did it intentionally in the past. You know, I'm very good at maintaining relationships and having, you know, really beautiful friendships in my life, but I was not 
you know, that way inclined to just talk to random strangers and, and uh, um, yeah, and network in that capacity. So it was definitely a new thing for me. It took me a few months to actually, you know, get comfortable just going to an event to meet people, let alone um, actually, you know, being able to have conversations with people. And so the more we can just normalize though, because I wasn't looking at it like that to begin with. And so if I had have looked at it as just having a conversation, it probably would have been a lot easier for me um, in the beginning. And then having a network is just about nurturing and maintaining relationships. And so we have been networking our whole lives. Ultimately, we're networking all of the time, whether we know it or not. And so uh, a few different ways that we network are going to networking events. Um, this was something that, uh, like I said, you know, I was very new to uh, about six years ago, uh, but over time have definitely been able to make some really, really great connections through going to networking events um, through sports. I'm sure we've all been a part of some sort of sporting um, team or any kind of community events. Um, sports is a great way to meet people and network as well. Uh, social media, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, there's uh, lots of, yeah, lots of great ways to utilize social media to build connections and to network. Uh, water cooler conversations in our workplace as well. You never know, you know, what, what conversation you might get yourself into with someone that you work with. You might, you know, learn that they have these other other activities that they love to do outside of work that you're also interested in. And, and that way you can, yeah, you can kind of network your way um, through those conversations uh, by your water cooler as well. Okay, so there's a few different reasons why we should network. Um, first of all, career growth is a, a really important reason to network. Um, what that allows you to do is it allows you to get introduced to the right people. You know, it, it allows you to get put forward for certain roles um, in that in that process. Um, it also allows you to get advice and mentorship from people within your career or in your industry. And it allows you to stay across uh, opportunities and insights. And so the, the way that I got my job here at Intern Match was actually through, through networking. You know, I'd made a, a connection six, seven years prior that ultimately led me to the one of the CEOs here at, um, at Intern Match. And that is what led me to getting a job. So uh, that was a very not intentional um, contact six, seven years ago uh, in that networking example. Uh, however, it did lead me to then be able to get connected to somebody who was then able to offer me a job. So that was really great. Uh, business needs. So if you are somebody who, you know, wants to run your own business, or maybe you are running your own business, um, it allows you to identify people that you can hire. Uh, I know there's, I know a lot of people that have been kind of recruited from networking events by a CEO because they've loved the conversation that they've been in with that person. And so uh, it can provide suggestions and guidance and advice as well. Also great for business development, ideas and inspiration. You never know who you might come across with that can give you ideas and inspiration to take your business to another level. And then the third element is personal needs. So uh, the reason you should network for personal needs is to build friendships and increase confidence. So like I mentioned at the start, you know, this has also been prevalent in my life outside of, uh, outside of work. I also um, network for my own personal needs. You know, I've created beautiful friendships and uh, it's definitely increased my confidence as, as well in being able to talk to, uh, talk to a lot of different kinds of people also allows it to be a sounding board for you as well. Um, it can create a cheer squad for you and also um, for mentorship. You know, I've, I've, created multiple connections over time. And uh, that led me to connect, get, getting connected to my mentors uh, that I have in my personal life. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a massive advocate for, for networking and putting yourself out there because you just never know who it's going to lead you to. Okay. <clears throat> so when you might need your network. So first of all, uh, early in our career, like I mentioned before, giving that example, it allows you to get a potential foot in the door. Um, if you meet somebody at the very start of your career and you're at a networking event and they're, you know, high up in the, in the industry you're looking to work in, then that could potentially give you a foot in the door. Um, during your career, your network can be really beneficial uh, to, you know, find some people that can mentor you to, to elevate your, uh, your skills and things like that, and also to provide technical advice. There might be things that, um, you know, there might be certain niches that you uh, would really like to get, I guess, perspective and, and information on around the technicalities of, of what your job um, is, what your job is and, and what is required of you. 
career growth um, in hiring staff as well. So if you are, a, you know, a HR lead or something like that, or you are in that phase of growing uh, an organization, it's for hiring staff as well. You know, you can meet people in that way, and, and that's a, a cheaper way to uh, to find people right than to paying uh, than to pay for recruitment and things like that. Um, going to networking events can be a great way to to go down that path as well. Uh, and then a career change, you know, it can give you an introduction to somebody that can lead to a new role. So there's lots of different areas that uh, you can lean on your network for throughout your career progression from the start through the middle. Um, and then if you are transitioning into a new career as well. Where to build your networks. So there are so many networking events around Melbourne that uh, that you can attend on a daily basis they're everywhere and so uh really opening up that search and, and looking for things that you can go to uh across all of those areas that we spoke about before around you know if being for career personal business there's so many different avenues you can go down with events and and building your network that way also through linkedin linkedin is a very great way to to connect with people that you would not be able to reach at events and so uh, that's a great tool for for networking as well so using conversation to build connection is, is what connection is all about, right? The only way we can really connect with people is if we're having conversations and sharing things back and forth. Now, the art of conversation. A conversation is the encounter of two polished minds, tactful enough to listen, confident enough to express their true beliefs, subtle enough to search out the reasons behind the thoughts. A conversation is a work of art with more than one creator. Now, that's a fancy way of, you know, explaining the, the art of conversation and what that is. So let's go into what makes a great conversationalist. Number one, they listen more than they speak. I truly believe that we were given two ears and one mouth for a reason uh, to listen more than we speak. And so being able to um, develop that skill is really important. You know, I, I can recall many a times where I would just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk because I was nervous um, and I wasn't actually listening to what uh, the other person was saying because I was just so busy trying to think about what I was saying. And so really being able to develop that skill of listening more than we speak is really powerful, especially if you're looking for advice in a certain area. Number two, uh, they use your name throughout conversation. Uh, another, you know, another thing that I guess is thrown around a lot is the, the greatest sound that we can hear is the sound of our own name. And I have experienced this in conversation many a times. I'm sure all of you have as well. I personally get really impressed when somebody that I've just met mentions my name and remembers my name. I think it's very common, and I, I was definitely guilty of this, I think it's very common to have the belief that we're not good at remembering names. And I think, you know, words are very powerful and what we believe to be true. And so I would really encourage, you know, if you're, if you're a person that, you know, you found yourself saying that and you believe that to be true about yourself, um, I encourage you to just switch that verbiage up a bit and say, you know, how can I remember people's names better? Because if we just say we're not good at remembering names, it doesn't encourage us to actually get good at it. But if that's a great way to be a conversationalist is to, you know, remember somebody's name and, and say it back to them in conversation, then that's going to create a lot of rapport. Uh, and so, you know, obviously there's, there can be a, a little bit too much as well. So make sure it's, you know, a good amount and it's, you know, you're not just saying the name every, in every sentence, um, that can be a little bit overkill, but, but yeah, just that, that element there in being able to repeat back somebody's name is very, very, a uh, very good way to connect. Number three, they are empathetic and curious. Curiosity is a, a really important aspect of conversation. Um, you know, you want to create that uh, interest in what somebody is actually saying. And so it ties into the last point there, they're interested in interesting. So being curious creates that level of, um, you know, intention of you're not just listening to what they're saying and not asking any questions, but you're actually getting curious. You know, tell me more about that. Why do you like doing that? You know, it really creates that connection and being empathetic. This comes naturally to some people and other people, it doesn't come naturally. So it's something that has to be developed. So if you're, you know, more than likely, uh, you know, more empathetic than, uh, than others, then this is, you know, maybe not an area that you really need to work on. I'm more empathetic, you know, just in, in general. Uh, my partner, for example, he is not, um, you know, naturally empathetic. So it's something that he has had to work on over the years. And so, 
someone uh, that has a lot of good content around empathy and vulnerability, which we're going to go into in a second, is Brene Brown. If you haven't heard of her before, look her up. She's incredible. She talks a lot about empathy and vulnerability and things like that. Uh, so, so yeah, in conversation, having empathy for people and being curious is really is really uh, important. Number four, they have an appropriate level of vulnerability, self-disclosure. So there's certain things, you know, when you're meeting somebody for the first time, especially, there's certain things that are more uh, appropriate for the conversation. So for example, um, you know, there is a, a heavy kind of disclosure, which is talking about things that, you know, are quite emotional or traumatic or things like that, that might not be necessary or appropriate in a first conversation, especially if you're networking and trying to build your, you know, your community and, and things like that. Um, sometimes in some circumstances, it might be okay, but we're just going to go for a general rule here that having an appropriate level of vulnerability in your conversations is really important. And sometimes this has to be, this is a skill for people to learn as well. Um, so these are some really great, uh, really great tips for how to become a great conversationalist. And again, there's so much, you know, content on YouTube around this as well. So um, you definitely use those resources and, uh, you know, become a master at this because it's really powerful. And also great body language. So making eye contact with people is also a great way to connect and to show that you're actually, you know, engaged in the conversation. You'd probably notice there's, there's some conversations that you might have where people are kind of, you know, getting distracted at everything walking by and maybe they're, um, you know, and, and you can't feel that they're actually engaged in the conversation versus someone who, when you're speaking, they're actually really engaged and they're looking, you know, they're making eye contact. So also being open, having open body language. You know, um, most of communication is body language, not actually words, which is crazy to me. But, you know, being open and, and standing tall and, you know, holding your neck up, shoulders back is a really great way to show that you're confident and you're you're really happy to be in that environment. And also smiling. Smiling is really great as well. It helps people feel at ease and also builds connection also. Okay, so yeah, we've touched on that interested and interesting. I think another thing as well, just that I'll touch on is, you know, with that vulnerability piece, it is really important that if, you know, you are getting curious and asking questions and you're interested in someone's story, it is important to give people a little bit back as well. Um, there's nothing... I guess, quite like a conversation where you're going back and forth and you're able to share little bits of yourself and connect the dots and find the relatability points and things like that. It's a really great, uh, a really great thing to get good at as well is learning how to, you know, give, give a little bit about you as well, but then also be, be really interested in what they're saying and, uh, and, and yeah, engaging conversation that way. Now, the reason that I put this up in the beginning was, yes, to introduce myself, but it was also to give you a framework um, and for you to actually create this for yourself. Because what this is going to do is it's going to allow you to, um, you know, have things to talk about with people. You know, when you're in a networking event or you're in a situation where you're getting to know somebody and they ask you little things like this, it's important to, to know, you know, what you actually like to do. Um, and and it, it creates, uh, yeah, confidence, I suppose, with yourself where when you are getting to know somebody and the person on the other end, the receiving end of that is, I mean, in, in my experience, when I have a, uh, have a conversation with someone and they're so clear on who they are and what they love, it's, uh, it's really nice. It, it's great because it means that they, um, you know, have really put a lot of thought into it and they spend time doing things that they love, which is really important. So take a, a screenshot or a photo of this. Um, because that will be, yeah, really helpful for, for you later. Okay. So let's move into this section around nailing your personal pitch. So what a personal pitch is, is, you know, a response when somebody asks you, what do you do? Or, um, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself. And so the answer to these questions is so important and it can create a lasting first impression. So the idea is to refine a pitch that is 50, 15 to 30 seconds long and clearly crafts who you are, what you do, who you help and why you help them. Now, how to create your personal pitch. So keep it brief. Share your name again, uh, because it ties into what I was saying before, right? Because it's not a natural thing for us to be intentional about remembering people's names, we can forget people's names, especially when we're meeting so many people as well. You could meet 10 people at a networking event. And so, you know, it is a skill that is you know, a learned skill that you'll, you'll develop over time if this is something that you struggle with. Um, but just out of, I guess, um, 
out of respect, I guess, not even respect, but um, just out of courtesy, I suppose, for that other person, in case they have forgotten your name, to just share your name again. Even if you've already introduced yourself, just share it again. Um, share where you work and what your title is, so ultimately what you do, and mention your purpose at work. Um, the purpose might be being a part of digital jobs. Um, the purpose for me, like I mentioned before, is because I love helping people and building relationships. And share why you're at the event. Is it because you want to gain your confidence in, in connecting with people? Is it because you're looking for a specific, um, you know, person to give you certain advice around something that you're seeking? And say it positively and enthusiastically. Again, this ties into just being a great commun um, communicator and conversationalist is to, to be really convicted about what you're saying. Because if you're convicted about what you're saying, it doesn't always matter what you're saying. Um, if you're convicted, someone's going to be like, wow, like this person is, they're, they're serious. This is great. And so really um, personalizing that for yourself is really important. Okay, so where to find networking events and groups? So there are a lot of different um, platforms that you can look at to uh, find networking events. So there's Eventbrite, Humanitix, and Meetup. Uh, these are three main um, groups that you can be a part of. Um, they're just apps. So you can just download the app um, and create an account and you can actually filter. Uh, you can filter for what you're looking for. You can either just filter for everything and sort through it that way, or you can um, specifically list things, uh, list things that you're interested in actually going to. Now, I have utilized Eventbrite and Meetup a lot. I've met so many people through these apps. Um, I've even created my own uh, event on one of these apps as well. So it's a really great way to meet people. It's a great way to find things that you're actually interested in as well. I think sometimes, you know, in the beginning, I was just going to anything because I just wanted to, um, you know, develop my skills. But then I started to actually really refine it and go to things I was interested in because if I'm going to things that I really love and I'm interested in, I'm going to find other people that have that shared, um, that shared passion potentially. And so that just kind of sets you up for having a really great connection with someone if you have that um, that common ground there. So yeah, jump on, have a look at these. Um, you can also look at them on um, a domain as well. It um, doesn't have to be an app, but they're all um, accessible via app as well. So these are a couple of examples of um, networking events in Melbourne. Um, I know a couple of people that know this, this event, Mentor Walks Melbourne, very well, and uh, they're very reputable. So um, that's just one example. Um, there's so many, there's so many events on there. So if you just type in this is specifically saying, you know, networking, if you want to, um, you know, learn how to get good at public speaking, you can actually type that in and the events that correlate to that will come up. So that's a, a great way to get into attending networks, um, networking events. Okay, networking event rules. So there are a few rules around networking. You want to go prepared and ready. You want to enter a conversation politely, but unapologetically. Now, this is something I have really had to work on because I'm very happy to just kind of like stand back and not interrupt and, uh, you know, not want to, I guess, you know, butt into a conversation or, uh, you know, interrupt people. And so I had to really learn how to read the cues as well. You know, body language is another thing. Uh, I've done a lot of research around, you know, body language and, and, you know, getting good at this. And some things that I've learned is, you know, observing people's body language when they are in conversation. You know, if, if you've got two people and their feet are facing towards each other, usually that's an indication that maybe they're having a more personal conversation and it might not be one that you would want to interrupt. Um, but if their feet are, you know, facing slightly to either side, um, then that's usually an indication that, you know, somebody else is welcome or it's not a, um, a really personal conversation that's happening that maybe you should avoid. So looking at that is really, um, is really important. But then when you do go into a conversation, especially if it's a group of people, you know, more often than not, there's, it's going to be so fine for you to just be like, hi, can I jump in and, and join this conversation with you? And that's as simple as it has to be, right? If someone doesn't want you to join in, they're going to say no. Um, but it's never happened to me. So um, another one is move around the room and change up your approach. So 
again, this is another thing I've had to really work on and it's moving around and not just getting stuck talking to one person. And it could be a really great conversation and that could be, you know, you could get everything you needed to from that and you could leave and, and be sweet. But if you, if your objective is to meet as many people as you can and, and to, you know, um, build upon your networks and your, uh, and your community, then you need to move around and be able to, you know, end a conversation politely to then be able to move on and, and continue to network. And, you know, grabbing people's numbers is really great. You know, you can say, I really value this conversation. Let's stay in touch. Um, you can connect on LinkedIn, all of those things. Um, so another thing like we've gone through already is to be a great conversationalist. So really the only way to become a great conversationalist, in my opinion, is to just go and have conversations. Uh, we can do all of these things in the background, like, you know, looking at body language and, um, you know, voice cord exercises, vocal cord exercises, whatever to, you know, to really help with our communication. Uh, but ultimately you're really going to get good at this by just doing it. Like I wouldn't have gotten good at this if I hadn't have pushed through that discomfort of not wanting to go. Um, you know, even though I did walk away multiple times, I decided that I wasn't going to do that anymore because I was wasting a lot of time doing that, getting a tram from one side of Melbourne into the city to then, um, you know, just go all the way back to, to go home anyway. So, um, so yeah, that was a, a lesson I had to learn, uh, but also following up and connecting. So once you have connected, doing the follow-up, uh, there's so many, um, you know, you can meet a lot of people in a week if you're, you know, if you just go gung-ho and, and you're going to all these different networking events. Um, if you're not following up with those connections that you're making, then what's the point really? So making sure you're following up and connecting is really um, pivotal as well. Okay, so the steps to a great conversation is to A, introduce yourself. Sometimes people are a little bit standoffish at networking events because maybe it's their first one. So if you go in with that confidence of introducing yourself to someone, especially if they're, you know, standing around by themselves, um, asking them their name, asking an open-ended question. Uh, an open-ended question is a question that elicits a response more than a yes or a no answer. And so asking an open-ended question, you know, why did you decide to come today uh, is, is a really powerful question. Uh, listen with intent of understanding, not just to respond. We've all been guilty of this. We've all been guilty of not really under, uh, listening to the person to understand what they're saying. Uh, sometimes we just want to respond and, and we're trying to think of what we're going to say and we're not actually listening to what that person is saying. So listening with intent and understanding. Also use the 50-70 eye contact rule. So we touched on eye contact a little bit earlier. And again, there's too much eye contact. Um, there can be too much eye contact and not enough eye contact, right? So getting that 50-70 rule, you know, 50% of the time, um, you know, engaging in that eye contact and, um, you know, 70% or, you know, 50-70 around engaging in eye contact. Sometimes you can, you know, break eye contact if you're thinking and things like that, you know, just like, zoning in on someone and, and not taking your eyes off them can be a little bit creepy. So um, just understanding that there's there's those uh, those elements there that there's, sometimes it's too much and it's just getting that, um, getting that balance right. Again, so much uh, content out there for us to look at to really understand that in a little bit more detail. And number six, embrace silence and know when to end the conversation. Silence is not a bad thing. You know, I think some people get a lot um, are very uncomfortable with there being silence in a conversation, um, but it allows the other person to think and it allows you to think and, you know, assess the situation and see how things are going. Sometimes you might notice that, okay, there's some silence here and I'm not getting the vibe that they necessarily want to continue this conversation. And that's totally fine. You know, you can very, like I mentioned before, very politely end a conversation. So it was great to chat. Um, you know, it'd be great to, to go around the room and meet some other people. Um, you know, embracing silence can be really powerful. So don't think that it's awkward or, um, you know, you shouldn't be conversing if there's a little bit of silence. Um, if you feel like the person is still happy to be in that conversation, just, you know, having that silence and thinking of another question to ask or, um, you know, pointing out something can be a really great way to, you know, continue that conversation. Okay, so I touched on it a little bit before around LinkedIn being essential to networking. Uh, I personally, I do have a LinkedIn page and I have used it in the past. It's not something that I'm really skilled in. So I'm not going to go into too much depth today. Like I mentioned at the start, we do have another webinar in the series that is dedicated to LinkedIn. So someone that has got a lot more experience on LinkedIn um, is going to actually run that webinar for you. 
So definitely jump on that if you're also a little bit uh, new to LinkedIn, you're not really sure how to use it, or if you don't even have a profile, uh, definitely jump onto that webinar um, because that will give you some really helpful hints and tips to, to really grow your network on LinkedIn as well. But why it's important to have LinkedIn. So following up, following up once you've connected with people, um, you know, it's your marketing brochure and you're ultimately the product. And so connecting with people post, you know, at um, connecting with people at and post events is a, is a great, you know, this LinkedIn is a great tool to be able to, to facilitate that. Building your network. Um, you can start your network online, seek out people who can learn, gain inspiration, opportunities, and advice. Um, so yeah, when you follow people on LinkedIn, they can lead you to other things that they're following and they're posting and sharing. And then also it's about nurturing your network, reminding them that you exist, adding value to their lives through engagement, information, and support. Um, something that I am good at doing on LinkedIn is when somebody shares around, you know, they've started a new job somewhere or, you know, they've done this or created an opportunity over here, then I, I make a note to celebrate that um, because that's a, a really, it's a really great thing. You know, encouragement is awesome and uh, being able to celebrate other people's successes and wins is really, is really great. <clears throat> So first things first, create a profile. Um, like I said, if you haven't got a profile um, and you are interested in, in making one, it is quite you know simple, straightforward. But once you've created a profile, then jumping on that uh, LinkedIn webinar will be really, uh, really helpful for you to learn how to navigate uh, the, the site. It's very, very easy to use. Um, using Quick Connect. So this is a new-ish feature on LinkedIn where you can use it to connect with people. So when you open up your LinkedIn app on your mobile phone, you click at the top on the search bar and there's like a little icon, like the QR code icon that comes up in the search bar. So you just click on that. And once you've clicked on that, your QR code will pop up and then the other person will grab their phone and they'll scan your QR code and it will instantly connect you on LinkedIn. So you don't need to approve their request or anything because this is a very specific link to your profile. You don't actually have to, you know, accept the request. So definitely only be providing this to people that you definitely want to connect with. Um, so, so yeah, this is a, it's a great tool. I've used this uh, multiple times at networking events and it's, it's great. It's so quick and simple. Okay, so people that you need to be connecting with. What number one, your friends. You know, the social media is a great way to do this. Uh, you know, I live in Melbourne, but I'm from Cairns and I lived in Brisbane for a handful of years. So I have networks all around the place and I've made friendships in, in all of those places. And, uh, you know, being able to connect with them online via social media is really powerful. You know, you can get a get an idea of what's going on in their life and and you know it can elicit you to to uh, reach out and and see what else is going on in their life you know because obviously social media is a highlight reel in in most instances so we don't really know what's going on in people's lives through social media but it's a good way to start those conversations and prompt uh and prompt you to to be connecting further with them your colleagues current and previous uh, I have lots of colleagues. I've, I think I've had about 20 different jobs in my, uh, in my, I don't even know how long I've been in the workforce, long time, 15 years, something like that um, over time. And I've bounced from job to job to job to job a lot. Uh, so I have lots of different uh, colleagues from past, from past jobs that I still, you know, stay in touch with, which is really great. Um, number three, people you meet. So everybody that you meet in the world uh, you should be in some way connecting with them, you know, if you've, if you have actually connected, you know, re reconnecting with people that, um, that you have, you know, added into your network over time. Number four, your stakeholders. And number five, people you can learn from and interested in their content or career. Uh, another, yeah, social media is a great way, right? There's so many uh, different people on the platform that are speaking about topics that we're really interested in and that we, uh, you know, value their content. So that's a great way to connect with, with uh, people online as well. Now, when you connect with somebody on LinkedIn, um, add a little note. So when you send that connection request, let them know why you want to connect. Um, did you meet them at an event? Um, are you starting a new role at their company? Um, do they have great content that you can learn from? 
And so when you are connecting and, and wanting to uh, yeah, create new connections and, and maybe kind of more cold contacts, doing this is a, is a great way to to really start to build that foundation and let people know why you want to connect because um, that way it's genuine and you can build your uh, you can build your connection and relationship from there. Okay, so next up, you need to nurture your network. So it's great to build a network, but to nurture it is another thing. Um, I like to look at our network as a living organism, right? A li living organism, we need to nourish it. We need to water it. We need to actually grow it in order for it to be fruitful. And so engage, engage, engage. Like, comment, share your network's content, uh, their achievements, celebration and updates. Um, I attended an event last night where I was the, um, the what do you call it? Um, wow, keynote speakers, uh, my husband and I, and it was great. You know, we we created a, a little bit of an achievement in our in our space outside of our, our jobs, and it was great to you know be celebrated by our peers and and things like that. So really engaging in in that kind of activity is really is really helpful um, for the person, but also for you in building that connection. Ask, touch base, check in. Um, you know, if there's somebody that's in your professional network or somebody that you've come across that you would love to, you know, have an opportunity to maybe work for them, um, just send them a message, you know, and ask them if they're hiring or uh, for a role that you might be interested in. You know, with the digital jobs program, there's obviously, uh, you know, my my role here is to develop those relationships with companies to open positions. But as a digital jobs participant, you know, if you're networking at an event and you, you know, you happen to meet a, a business owner that you really, you, you really love the industry that they work in and, and love what they're about, you know, you can actually source your own placement through that avenue as well. And then when you, you know, if that happens, you can actually refer them to us and we can see if they're eligible for the $5,000 wage subsidy. So you're also, you know, whilst this is great for your you know, professional development and things like that, becoming a good, good conversationalist, networking, you can actually, yeah, meet people that we can't even reach for you. So I think that's a really, really great uh, part about all of this as well and learning how to network because you can really put, uh, you know, get your foot in the door by doing your own networking and your own connecting because that can be really, really, um, really appealing for companies if you're out there doing the networking and, you know, finding opportunities for yourself as well keep across their lives. You know, if you bump into uh, another connection at a different event, um, in a meeting or on the street, you're across the latest promotion, new roles, latest milestone. You know, you're able to share, oh, I saw that this happened for you. Like, that's amazing. And just really being encouraging of that. And share content with them, you know, adding value. Adding value is a really great way to maintain relationships. My husband and I do this a lot. You know, if we meet people, uh, you know, we remember the conversations that we have with people. What are their pain points? What are their desires and dreams in life? And if we come across any content that we think might add value, we send it their way. You know, there's been people that we've, you know, have come back into our lives from a while ago that wouldn't have come back into our lives unless we hadn't have had that um, practice of really adding value. Um, adding value to them and and nurturing nurturing that organism of a network. Okay, so some content ideas for you when you are uh, utilizing, uh, you know, LinkedIn or or any kind of social media is twenty five percent of posting what you're up to. Um, show your human side. You know, what is your day like? Where are you working from? What events are you attending? What community work are you doing? These are really great ways to um, to get people to really have a have a peek inside of your life and what you're all about. Because, you know, it's all well and good to post, um, you know, content and, and information and, and things like that. But if you're not showing the, the more personal side to you as well, people can't really connect as well. Um, so 25% your company and peers. So the company you work for is a big part of your brand. Uh, sharing content and updates of what is happening at the company, your peers celebrate your company. Um, and so that's a really great way as well to, to really engage with that. And, and you never know who might see that and, and might reach out to build a connection with you as well. 25% industry and skill set news. So showcase your skill set and niche by sharing content relevant to the role you are in, industry news, and things that will add value to your network. And also 25% self-promotion. People love to celebrate other people's success on LinkedIn. So if you start a new role, get a promotion, achieve a big project, let your network know. Like I said before, this is such a great feeling, you know, when you when you post something that um, you have just achieved or uh, a new venture that you've started on and having people really support that, encourage you along the way is really great. So definitely share that stuff on your LinkedIn as well. 
here are some examples of some content ideas. Uh, so we all love a, a doggo in a in an office or from working from home. Uh, just yeah, all these different events uh, that you can share if you're going to, you know, if you're going to networking events, share about it, you know, get your network to see that you are actually, you know, committed to, to building connections and things like that. Your network is a long term game. So this isn't something that can be achieved in a short period of time. Uh, I have been working on this for the better part of six and a half years, really networking and understanding that, you know, yeah, that that period of time ago, I was not great at it. But over time, I've developed that skill. And if I had have expected myself to be a professional at it within the first couple of months, that would have been just, you know, negligent to my own growth. So uh, so yeah, you know, understanding that it's a long term game, and you will get better over time if you really put the effort into, into improving in this in this area. So let's do a little bit of a recap. So number one, you want to work on your pitch and conversation game. Number two, get your LinkedIn profile really fantastic so that when you start to go to those networking events and you're sharing your pitch and you're having conversations, then you can connect with them and they can go to your LinkedIn um, and, and really connect with you that way as well. Number three, attend events and make connections. Number four, follow up on those connections, connect and reach out to them on a regular basis. Number five, be seen, use LinkedIn to nurture your network, have an insight into what you're, what you're up to. And number six, use your network for what you need when you need it. There's so many connections that, uh, that I've made over time where, uh, you know, they're an expert in a certain area. And so when I need something in that field, I go to that person. And so, you know, you might not use these people in your network all of the time, but it's just about having people in your network and nurturing that so that when you do need it, um, it is a, a really genuine interaction. Okay, so that is all I'm going to throw at you today um, from a webinar presenting perspective. Um, do we have any questions? I'm happy to uh, answer any questions that anybody has. If you want to pop it in the Q&A um, or the chat function. That is great. Um, I do believe that this webinar and the slides will be, or maybe even a recording. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I do believe that this will be available for you um, to review afterwards as well. Hello, Tatiana. Any advice for online networking events? That is a great question. Um, online networking events are very interesting. I think it depends on the event. Um, I have attended a couple and some of them have, you know, you have the ability to, um, you know, go into breakout rooms and things like that. And it's more of a uh, yeah, a little bit of an intimate setting where you can connect and, and um, you know, exchange context that way. Uh, but I think any, yeah, it depends on the networking event, but I think same things apply, right? Like if you're, if you have that opportunity to have more conversations in a more intimate space, then great. Um, I haven't had a very, you know, in-depth experience with the online networking events where it's kind of just, a webinar like this or you know it's more somebody presenting and then it's more of like a group setting conversation um, where you can't really connect with people uh, but um, but yeah I think same thing goes right like just understanding the the conversation piece and connecting with people in in you know what your um, general um, interests are if you have any relating um, you know, hobbies and things like that, or um, interests, then to, you know, be able to say like, you know, this has been a great conversation, or, um, you know, I noticed that in the networking event, you answered this, I can really relate to that, would you be happy to, to connect afterwards? Um, I have a feeling as well, some networking events after the event, you have access to be able to connect with people um, post, post that uh, event. So, 
if that's the case, then just, um, yeah, reaching out and, and sharing that uh, you'd like to connect and, and see where it goes from there. I hope that answered your question. Sorry, I haven't had too much experience in the online networking event um, sector, but yeah, it just depends how many people are there, what the setup is, if there's breakout rooms and, and things like that. Great question. You're welcome. Give a couple more minutes just in case any last minute questions pop up. Thank you so much uh, for attending this session. Uh, you can email us at digitaljobs at internmatch.io for any, um, any questions that you might have. Um, to access that information, submit queries and register for other websites, uh, sorry, other webinars via our hub. Um, you can, yeah, email us and we can help you out with that. So with that, if there's no final questions, I will close at the meeting. I hope this was valuable for you all. Uh, I really hope that it's, yeah, given you something to take away and think about and apply and, uh, yeah, just brush up your networking skills. So it is fun. It's so much fun. So if you kind of go into it um, with a, a really good attitude and, and uh, you know, just being able to uh, put a smile on other people's faces as well, um, it's a really great way to kind of take the pressure off of networking. So, so yeah, have fun with it. And I look forward to potentially jumping on uh, at another point to present something else to you all. So good luck with your digital jobs journey. And I'm sure that you will excel in anything you do. Awesome. Thanks, guys.